I mean, I think it all came to fruition from necessity, honestly. It was all necessity. Uh, I wanted, I started out as an actor and I got to New York and I wanted to do off-Broadway theater making, you know, $5.50 a week. <laughs> and um, I uh, realized that those, even those jobs were very competitive with people who worked in film and television and, um, you know, so that doing theater almost was like a privilege, you know, not a right. And so I was like, okay, well then let me go do film and television, but I couldn't get arrested. I could not get arrested. Um, and so I was like, okay, I had seen, you know, tiny furniture and I had seen um, misadventures of awkward black girl, you know, Lena Dunham and Issa Rae and women who had kind of taken, uh, taken the bull by the horns and shot their own stories, told their own stories and then you know, were able to give, were given creative license after that. So I was inspired by their paths. And so, you know, similar to those stories, like I was referencing, like Tiny Furniture, for example, you know, most of that was shot in Lena Dunham's parents, you know, properties or whatnot, like in the city. And I think the city gives you so much texture and so much life and vibrancy. So I knew I wanted to tell the story in the Bronx and of the Ghanaian, you know, American community in the Bronx. And, uh, and then centralize it around the bookstore because I knew that we could shoot for free there because they wouldn't <laughs> charge me. So Miko Gattuso is, uh, he was in a film called Gimme the Loot that was produced by Jamin Washington who also produced Queen of Glory. And it was written and directed by Adam Leon who plays my boyfriend in Queen of Glory. He plays Lyle. So this is basically just like friends, you know, sharing information and working together. So when I came up with that part for Orlando Pitt Rodriguez, I was like, you know, I, I think it, my producer Jamin was like, I think this is, this should be Miko. And I was like, Miko as an employee of a Christian bookstore? I knew I wanted to cast him, but I did not think that that was the part. And then I was like, oh wait, no, it's perfect. And then, and so, and now I can't think, I can't imagine the film without him in that role. I think it was an exploration of, you know, when I go to Ghana, my family calls me American. And when, I, when I'm in America, my family, it, not my family, but like my friends refer to me as Ghanaian. And so it's like, I'm in this in-between, you know, I don't feel a hundred percent at home in either place. And I've heard my friends who are first generation say similar things, um, you know, or my friends even who are biracial, you know, have said similar things. And so I wanted to explore that in between um, and just tell a truthful story from that. So the story is not autobiographical, but that idea of belonging in two worlds, but not feeling quite at home in either one definitely uh, is autobiographical. I definitely think it's a strength more than it's a weakness, but I think in those like fragile moments of transition, like either being a teenager or, you know, just kind of like figuring yourself out in your twenties or, you know, maybe even beyond. Like, I think that that is like really, that can sometimes, you know, it, it makes you feel a little bit more lonely than you see it. But then as you grow older, you see it as an asset. Yeah, you see it as a strength. It was very difficult. I mean, first time filmmakers, obviously it, it is notoriously difficult to get your first film financed. Um, in this instance, we had a couple of brave investors uh, who were willing to take a chance on me. Um, and then we also did a Kickstarter and then, uh, and then after all of us had been working a little bit more, we all contributed financially, me and the producers uh, all invested to see us over the finish line. So that was kind of, so it was a little bit of a, mi a, mi a mishmash, but it was very difficult. I and mean, we, we, a lot of people said no. People who, I'm just gonna say this between us, people who said no, who then like, when they saw that, you know, Magnolia had acquired, you know, rights or whatever, they were like, hey, did I invest in that film? It's like, no, you no. didn't. <laughs> yeah, I definitely think she was, she was really, uh, you know, losing herself in her work and in her profession and defining herself that way. And then, um, yeah, her, you know, mothers give life. And then in this instance, a mother's death 
is giving a second life, you know, a second realization that she's not living the way that she maybe ought to be, you know, or a way that might bring her more joy. Yeah, I'm so excited. I mean, it's so great for a New York film to have a New York, you know, film festival premiere. Um, so that feels like a real gift. Um, and I'm just like, you know, I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled. You know, you start off and especially when a film takes a really long time, you know, and you're in it, you're in the slog of it you don't even think about this moment, you know, because it's too much to even hope for. So to know that this film is gonna have its first premiere, uh, first film festival premiere at Tribeca is just beyond.